The 6.5 is on the road in Barcelona at Mobile World Congress 2024. We are here in the Lenovo booth. It's been an incredible experience here at Mobile World Congress. And as you would expect, there's a whole lot of edge use cases to the edge network, to the core network and everything in between. It's, it's very, very uh, exciting. One of the key trends that we've seen over the last five years, which by the way, it's ironic, edge computing has been around for pretty much forever uh, at retails and manufacturers, but it really was never connected in with the rest of the systems of the company. So there's a lot of talk about edge computing and the reason for edge computing is very simple. It's putting compute where the data is to get faster responses, uh, better responses without constantly having to go back and forth to the cloud or your on-prem data center, colo, wherever your infrastructure sits. And I am really pleased to have many time, uh, many times guest, I was trying to guess how many times, five times guest, I think, I think so. Charles Furland, who runs the Edge and Telco business at Lenovo. Great to see you. Thank you, Pat, great to be here. And you're absolutely right that Edge Computing has been around, but I think the innovation now is well, first of all, the compute has always followed the data and the center of gravity has been the data, which was right. a, the case in the mainframe, was the case in client server architecture, the case in the cloud. Now we're realizing that the center of gravity of the data is actually at the edge. The massive amount of data being generated by video cameras, for example, right. requires us to bring the compute to the edge. And the problem we were facing before is we had PCs that were under power or small IoT gateways, unable to process AI. And that's the biggest innovation that we have, is we that's were right. able to package the compute capability of the cloud, the same performance, the same AI capability, but put it in a much smaller, ruggedized, secure, quiet form factor that can operate at the edge in retail stores, hospital, schools, ambulance, whatever. Yeah, I'm glad you gave that background. And I remember edge computing you know, 30 years ago it was either a PC or it was maybe a mini computer yep. uh, somewhere, or raised tile, which, I don't know, can we call raised tile flooring with a rack edge computing? I don't know, maybe. Perhaps we can, <laughs> however, that's very impractical. If you think about a retail store or a convenience store, they don't have the physical space for it, they don't have the cooling, the electricity, they don't have, they don't have filtered air and so on. So that's one of the challenge of edge computing and that's what we're addressing by having these components as powerful as the cloud, as a data center, however packaged into a, something that can operate mounted on a wall in a janitor's closet in a gas station, for example. Uh, let's do the double click on Edge AI. Yeah. What are What is Lenovo doing? You're not new to Edge AI because I know that and I know the GPUs don't define AI because actually most of AI gets done on the CPU still. Correct. But but what is new with Lenovo Edge AI here at the so, show? That's a good question, and you're right to point out that GPUs are an important aspect of the of the AI strategy. Right. However, the CPU itself, with OpenVINO from Intel, for example, is quite powerful as well. Right. Um, what is new is simply that the vast amount of data generated by the cameras that I was talking a few minutes ago, what do we do about it? How do we process it? Right. And we need to have the compute capability that will find insight. And that insight might be very well, how many people yeah. are in the store at any time of day? Or how long are they staying in the store? Or if I put an advert at the gas station, at the pump station of a specific brand, when the customer walks in the store, are they buying that brand? So being able to correlate the right. shop, the advertisement with the shopping experience requires processing video image. And this is what AI is becoming critical to many of these smart retail use cases. AI and edge are extremely important because while we're realizing many of our customers are investing in large language model and learning technology in the data center, we believe that the next three years is going to be defining AI at the edge. The AI inferencing is going to be key and we expect to have most of our projects deploy in edge environment using AI inferencing. And you know, it's interesting, in technology it's more about ands versus or you're going to keep doing analytics at the edge. You're going to keep doing machine learning, deep learning, and generative AI, right? Isn't that the new, right? I mean, you can't have any conversation here at the floor without talking about generative AI, but that is, is that the next frontier uh, for the is. edge? Correct, right, and this is, uh, actually, if I step back a little bit, many of our customers are looking at the edge and, and looking at their site and say, I have a PCs, I have a, 
IoT gateway, I have a media server for the in-store music and whatever. They have multiple devices, each representing a different management challenge, each representing a different security risk because you have to maintain them individually. So actually the strategy that many are taking is extending their public or private cloud approach with right. whatever they're using in the data center and stretching it with the same administrative tools to these edge location, so it's seen as an extension of their cloud and consolidating the application using VMs, using containers, and eventually building upon that infrastructure that's now powerful enough to host generative AI and other smart application for their businesses. Yeah, I'm glad you talked about the symmetry between uh, the public or the private cloud and the edge, because that was really one thing that was missing uh, in the past is we had OT operational systems and we had IT systems and the two really didn't cross, maybe aside from shuttling data back and forth. And a lot of these OT systems were very rigid, uh, very difficult to put new applications and, and layer and layered on there. And I'm also glad that, that you were very clear to talk about uh, the, the future capabilities, probably even today, of generative AI smaller models because we're hearing a ton about generative AI in the cloud, we're hearing a ton about generative AI on the smartphone and the PC, but right. you have, obviously the technology is going to be there, it just takes a little bit longer to roll that out, to have let's say smaller models. You know, I don't need a set, probably don't need a 70 billion parameter model on the edge, maybe 10 yeah. or 15. I know smartphones are going to be running 10 billion parameter models to be able to uh, get that extra oomph out of what it can do. And, you know, my short explanation or education about what's different about generative AI, it's the ability to mix different types of data, and that could be security camera data with POS data or even CX data, and I think that's super, super exciting. So, uh, another big, this is always a discussion here in Mobile World Congress, I don't know how many years you've come here. I think Too is, many, but it's exciting. Yeah, <laughs> it is exciting, but, uh, to keep all of this going, we have to talk about business models of the CSPs. Right. And I'm curious, how, what's your thesis, or what examples do you have where edge computing can help uh, CSP offer more services and drive more revenue? Well, for the communication service provider, it's often about how do I use my network infrastructure. And therefore, we, we, we work with Telefonica here in Spain to build a proof of concept that demonstrate how we can improve public safety and first responder action. So using the cameras existing in the city, uh, using drones even mounted with some cameras, we're able to capture a vast amount of data. The challenge I set was how do I detect if there's an early sign of fire? How can I detect smoke somewhere in the city, somewhere in a park or in a forest? Well, you have the data being generated and captured by the cameras. However, you can't backhaul, you can't bring all of this back to a central cloud for processing. It's simply too much. It will right. overwhelm your network. Too much data. Almost. Too much data. Therefore, we need to train the system to recognize early signs of smoke, for example, and bring the compute distributed across vast geographic area so that it's able to, the system is able to train, is trained and able to detect early sign of smoke and notify the authorities, the firefighters in this case, to make an action earlier, sooner rather than later basically. That's one example how we can enhance the quality of life of the habitant of a, a, a city uh, by using AI in and processing the existing data. I think that's very important. Many of our customers don't realize it, but the data is already being captured by video only 2% of it is processed, so what we're bringing edge computing at those sites, we're processing a vast amount of data to extract the insight. Yeah, it's a great example, you know, we've heard of uh, you know, an earthquake country, yeah. uh, earthquake detection, there's tidal wave detection, uh, fire detection, that's interesting and I, I love it. it, it saves lives, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, when I'm working on the weekend, I'm wondering, hey, am I actually saving lives here? I'm like, no, this is not mission critical. But then again, there are examples when technology is truly mission critical. And I was in uh, another one of your partner's booths where they had edge computing uh, inside, inside of an ambulance. Being Absolutely. able to uh, treat patients where they didn't have the skills of, uh, of the ambulance crew to go directly to the emergency room uh, to get help, and the other one was having a cataloging system of equipment, because sometimes you forget to bring the right equipment 
on the ambulance yeah. uh, to be able to treat it. And this was a way with RFID to track to make sure that that equipment was inside uh, of that ambulance. But again, there's numerous examples. I, know. I mean, I'm, I'm blessed to have a job that I get to talk to these customers all over the world. I talk to fishermen in the Gulf of Mexico who have edge servers on their boat measuring the sizes of the fish using AI. We have uh, remote islands in the Pacific using edge AI to detect invading species and being able to prevent the spread of that species on the island. I'm talking to farmers in the UK that are using AI to identify the behavior of their animal and detecting early sign of a disease instead of giving antibiotics to the entire farm. So there's numerous use cases that as a technologist, myself and the team has never thought about, but it's actually exploding and exponentially growing fast. However, it's extremely interesting to learn about these use cases. And, and at Lenovo, we have a vast ecosystem of independent software vendor of solutions, probably over 50 of them right now, that are designed for retail industry, manufacturing, logistic, transport, quick serve restaurant. It's quite exciting to be talking to all those customers. Yeah, I, it's interesting. I was going to ask, with all this opportunity and people needing your help, like where do you start? And I guess you're, you're customer led here and you know, incrementally, where can you provide a unique benefit to them that, that others can't? Is that is that a good answer? I just answered my own question. We start for you. with a conversation, <laughs> I guess. We have, we're blessed to have to operate in 180 market. We do have a very comprehensive force, uh, sales force, and a, yeah. an even more impressive channel. We're channel lay, led, so we have partners all over the world that are able to have that conversation about edge computing. And I think I may have said on the record, and using absolutes as an analyst is always a dangerous thing, but you still have the most comprehensive edge platform of anybody out there that, that, that we research. And, and I think it matters because the edge is very different. It is. Right? It can be in an ambulance, it can be in an elevator shaft, it can be uh, behind the scenes, uh, uh, screwed to a wall yep. uh, at, at a retailer or a, fa a fast food, and I'm sure you've got a hundred other uh, ways, you know, out on a, an, an energy platform uh, somewhere. Sometimes you don't have full connectivity. Sometimes you do, but you can't rely on it and bank on it. And, and thank you for the for the comment on the portfolio. I do <laughs> believe it is the broadest and the, de and the most comprehensive edge portfolio. It's no coincidence though. We took engineering team from the laptop division, for example, or, or we're number one in ThinkPad, and we have engineers right. that know how to to build very small, very compact, very ruggedized device. We take our laptop, we drop coffee, unfortunately, we drop them on the floor, and they keep running for years. So we took engineering and know-how from that team. We went to our mobile colleagues in Motorola and said, help us build more efficient wireless communication yeah. out of an edge server. As you've mentioned, sometimes you do not have an ethernet cable and rely on Wi-Fi. And finally, we work with the infrastructure group, which build the fastest supercomputer in the world and the most resilient computer uh, servers on the market to build these servers to be performant and also operating at the edge and not having to maintain them for several years ahead. So I have to ask, like, this has been all rainbows and unicorns <laughs> uh, for, the, for this conversation, yes. which I think is always a good place to start, but let's talk about the challenges. I mean, what are the, what are the challenges uh, for getting to that? Because we, again, we've had the edge for, I don't know, as long as retail has existed. Yes. And I would say even going back to, uh, uh, mechanical cash registers, okay? <laughs> uh, or maybe abacuses, I don't know. Where it started, <laughs> but actually electrification, electronics has been in banks since computers started. So what are the challenges moving this forward? Because right. the, cl the, the benefits are there. And why is this web 4.0 thing not immediately happening like a breaker switch? There's a couple of challenges, but the number one thing that I'll say, Pat, is every time we meet a customer, they test this in the lab, fantastic. They select 10 sites and they do a pilot, brilliant. It always works. Now you deploy 8,000 sites across 14 countries and the challenge is there, right? So the scalability, and this is where we, we need to help. And Lenovo looked at this a couple of years ago and said, well, this is not going to scale fast enough to reach that level of deployment. So we developed a tool called Lenovo Open Cloud Automation, which basically allowed the technician that goes at the edge site to simply mount on the wall, do the physical connectivity, right. and using a very simple app on a, on a tablet or a phone, act, securely activate the device. Once the device is securely activated, 
everything is automated. We treat the infrastructure as a code. You don't have to think about it. You just walk to the next site and do the next physical installation. All within a few minutes, a few hours, the entire site will be automated and up and running. That's called Lenovo Open Cloud Automation. And if you don't automate the deployment process, it's an execution nightmare right. to try to deploy this at scale. Right. No, I, it, I can't help but to think too, right? My company uh, covers not only the, the edge compute and data center, but also PCs and devices. Yes. Sounds a whole lot like zero touch provisioning. It is. On a system, and Lenovo might know a little bit uh, about that. <laughs> we have a couple million devices to practice ourselves. <laughs> exactly. Yes. No, this is great. And um, by the way, when I talk to enterprises and I ask them this, this question, these are also very complex um, changes, right? When you're talking about OT, you can't bring down your retail store. You can't bring down your manufacturing plant. Like sometimes we think everything's a new a new installation, it's not. There's actually business going on at that facility that not only have to run the facility on the current infrastructure as you're deploying new infrastructure. Right. So it's very complex and it has a lot of different vendors, it has uh, consultants, it has uh, a lot of a multi-vendor solution typically. So it is a little bit more complex. So I don't always ask the question when I know the answer, but this is always, I've always, the last few years scratching my head, it, I see the benefit of it. And by the way, while we're at it, are there any core business benefits to, to, to deploying that? We talked about um, better information, but, but what does better and quicker answers actually mean to a business? Right, well, I'll give you an example of self-checkout. We've seen during the pandemic, many of the retailer deploying these self-checkout kiosk, right? Turns out that many people forget to scan an object as they, as they check out. Intentionally or not, the 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 the, uh, the fact is that there's some lost business there, right? Quite quite significant. Now these retail environment already have cameras, right? By introducing edge computing at that site with a powerful uh, GPU to process the image and recognize the hand movement, we're now able to recognize if somebody forgets to scan an object yeah. or if there's two objects one on top of another, right? Retailer in this case are able to cut down. Their, their, their shrinkage or their loss right. by 80%. So the payback for these retailers is about 80, is, is in less than two months typically when we do the business case. So when you talk about benefit, yes, the benefit number one is you're able to improve your bottom line. However, once you have that compute at the premise, now you're able to track people walking in the store, see how long they're, they're remaining in the store, which areas are they interested, which areas are not interested. So it's all these additional benefit that can come out of edge computing, but the core use case in that scenario is how do I reduce my shrinkage? How do I improve my bottom right. line? I love it, Charles. It's been a great conversation. Thank you. I could keep this going, but I know you have important people to meet with, uh, and there's always next time. And I, I, I want to have you back on the show to do the double click in the future on generative AI. What you're learning, what the deployments look like, kind of the state of that. Get, maybe I'd love to have you back. I always on. have time with you, Pat. I appreciate the uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thanks very much. This is Charles Fairland, uh, Lenovo Edge Computing, uh, and also uh, Carrier Services Lead here. It's been a great discussion here so far. I love the Edge, I'm passionate about the Edge, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Uh, hang in there for more Lenovo coverage at Mobile World Congress 2024. Check out all of the coverage. Thanks and take care.